Kia ora I got the podium now, so the first thing I want to do is to mihi to all our rangatahi Māori who voted this at this election, and especially to my Ngāti Paro whānau who came out in force. And we have one of our whānau representing Ikaroa Rāwhiti at the moment. So kia ora. Um, ko aio, um, ngā uri aho o Ngāti Paro, ko kai rangaho o Ag Research Tomahi, and he noho ana ho o kirikiri roa. So kia ora. Um, this is my uh, uh, korero is about kaitia kitanga, uh, protecting our tonga plant species. And that is a picture on the front of five years ago of a group of us from around the mutu or different iwi coming together in response to myrtle rust. So could we have the next slide, please? Okay, I'm just doing working my oops. Okay, uh, this is um about biosecurity, this Vicaro, and we're going to be uh, it's a journey spanning the last five years from 2017 to 2023. So First of all, I'm going to talk about myrtle rust uh, very briefly. The corridor is not about myrtle rust. Um, and our mana whenua responses with the help of uh, Te Tira Whakamātaki and Kew Gardens in, from the UK. And then I'm going to talk about um, actually mana whenua at the Millennium Seed Bank in Kew Gardens in the UK in 2018. Of um, I was one of them. And then I'm going to talk about a kopapa I currently work on at the moment around our kakano as well, which is the rapid ohia death, um, which is affecting ohia lehua, which is the um, puhutukawa in Hawaii. Um, the picture above looks like a puhutukawa, but it's actually an ohia. And uh, the picture below is myrtle rust, which was the main driving force for... Um, for the starting of seed banking, really, for um, for us Māori in these spaces. So next slide, please. Just going to give a brief overview of myrtle rust. It arrived in um, Aotearoa in the Kermadex in 2017, and I had just come home from, uh, moved home from um, Queensland around that time. So for some people, I got blamed for bringing the myrtle rust with me. But I've actually since heard a korero that it was Tafiri Matia that blew that myrtle rust over because he's still fighting with his uh, siblings. So that to me was a better, you know, I could understand that better than me bringing it over. So um, Quick overview of myrtle rust around that. It's um, it affects our Myrtaceae species. Most of us would sitting in this corridor would know about that. Um, at the time when I came back to Aotearoa, I had already known about myrtle rust, and some of my science colleagues in Australia at the time said it would be about thirty to fifty years before Australia realised the impact of myrtle rust, and um, I think that's probably true. So in Aotearoa, we have unique ecosystems and climates that have led to the development of several distinct species within the Myrtaceae Fano. Uh, many of these plants are important for their ecological and cultural significance. And these include uh, Puhutukawa, Darata, Manuka, Kanuka, Ramarama, uh, Swamp Maire, the uh, Syzygium, and of course the Fijoa, which is our kai now, and Eucalyptus. So myrtle rust can severely damage um, plants like this taonga of ours and um, cause leaf deformities and a range of other things. Um, it still remains a significant challenge for us here in Aotearoa as it still threatens our um, taonga species. So um, if you suspect myrtle rust on any plant, it's crucial to report it, and I've just put a little website down there, but if you just myrtle rust into Google, um, you'll, you'll find the site okay. So there's still a lot of ongoing research happening in this space and around the globe to understand its biology and develop strategies uh, for control and management. 
and Aotearoa scientists still collaborate with other countries that have experience in dealing with murderers, including Australia. So it has been a sharing of knowledge um, in these fields. It's uh, when spread um, the disease, so it can move anywhere, really. Um, and that's how apparently got here. Next slide, please. So my story starts um, with our uh, mana penua in 2007. We had a couple of far seeing whānau in Ngāti Parau, or just um, Graham Atkins and Tina Ngata, and they started our plant identification, identification courses for our whānau to recognise what myrtles, what were metaceae out there in the field. So when they were out there in the ngahere, either hunting or, you know, kai gathering, and they saw something, you know, it's different and strange, they might be able to recognise it. So, um, and mana whenua are the, you know, they're the main... Mana whenua are the main drive of when we have um, uh, biosecurity threats into the country because they're on the ground, they're the grassroots of our whanau, they're on the whenua, and they can see these changes as they happen. They can see there's something wrong. So it's around about, you know, empowering our whanau in these spaces a lot more so, you know, all of us and all of our whanau can recognise these threats so at that time, we undertook some field work and training. Um, I was living at home in Ngāti Parau, and uh, we got sent around the mutu to do uh, various, um, to look at myrtle rust that had arrived in the country to, um, this is us there dressing up in our um, hazardous gear to go in and, and look at um, the disease. And this was, um, you know, a few of us from around the country. This was also run by uh, TTW and the uh, Ministry of Primary Industries were in there as well, helping uh, Mana Whenua get organised. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, it was actually about Whanaungatanga, and, um, you know, all of us as iwi coming together in response to um, to a bi biological threat, biosecurity threats. Um, it was about learning together. And we got these seed bank kits with each other's big blue drums there. They came across from, um, from Kew Gardens and with them came a few of their staff to help us learn how to use them. Um, uh, next slide, please. So um, in those drums were these, um, we had a few resources in there, like um, the seed cleaning um, sieves, uh, some bags for collecting, and um, and hygrometers, which is uh, measures the um, relative humidity of seeds. It actually um, measures the moisture content of seeds. Um, and we had a couple of courses around the mutu. One was in Auckland and one was in um, Wellington where we came together, different people from around different iwi to learn how to use these seed banks to be able to go out into the ngahere and collect our seeds before the disease came along. To, um, so um, Pakapapa is a huge thing in seed collecting. It's it's imperative um, because we were whatever tree you're collecting from, you want to keep that whakapapa um, in the seed right through wherever it goes. So with those seeds, we were looking at storing them for long-term storage. So it was about um, getting the moisture content correct to be able to freeze them and uh, store them long term. So there's a, a, as mana whenua, we had our own protocols. This was fairly new to my hapu, so we developed a few uh, uh, protocols around that. Um, so if, so our uh, next slide, please. Can't remember what's there. Oh yes. So this is our one of our um, courses we took around the seed banking. Um, it was about collecting a herbarium specimen as we collected the seed 
and um, keeping all these things together. And it was just a great learning, um, you know, kaupapa around this and making us more aware of um, of these um, of what we had here. So that was pretty cool. We met a, a lot of like-minded people at this um, kaupapa. Next slide, please. Um, so that led to uh, um, heading off to um, to Kew Gardens in in um, the UK. We went to the Millennium Seed Bank there. Um, I had a, uh, one of our other whanau from the Wanganui, Kimi Ranginui. Um, she came off with me and we went to learn more about seed conservation while we were there. Um, I've got this picture of our Ngāti Rānana Fano, who we went in to a pōhiri while we were there and found out that we've all got Fano over there somewhere. And that was at New Zealand House. So there was a lot of my uh, Ngāti Fano I met there as well. Um, next slide, please. So um, it was a global, it's a, it was a global group that we were with and there were people from 11 different countries there learning with us. And uh, we did a bit of field work going out and collecting with their um, really flash telescopic uh, pruners they had. And we had a look at the Kew Garden Tiberium and around the, um, you know, where they stored all the seeds as well as some old collections that, um, you know, from the Joseph Banks and the Captain Cook days that they had collected here in Aotearoa. And they also had a vault, which is this middle picture with everyone walking down the stairs. Now, that vault could hold something like 28 double-decker buses. So it was huge. So we kind of all looked at it and thought, yeah, well, it's not just for the seeds. It was probably the, it's probably the nuclear bunker for the royal family as well. Because, and... The, some of the resources they had there at, at the Millennium Seed Bank were just amazing. Um, I kind of thought, wow, you know, I don't think we've got anything like this in Aotearoa or, or even in Australia where I had worked. So they had really high technology stuff there. And that's because they had seeds from all over the planet. So you get into their database and you see a a, a a picture of the a map of the world and all the little dots where they've collected all their seeds. You go down to Aotearoa, there's one dot, and that dot was an alpine plant somewhere in the South Island. So we didn't have that many, we didn't have any specimens over there actually, and that is because of Te Tariti and the agreement with um with us here in um Aotearoa. But uh, we had, like I said, there were 11 different countries there. They came from, you know, from Oman, Lebanon, Colombia, um, Europe, Slovenia, Taiwan, all over the world. And it was great to hear about other seed banks around the world because most countries will focus their resources on the one seed bank. And these people that were there were you know, we're the botanists that 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 worked in those seed banks. And um, you know, that that was a huge part of their their, you know, the just for the whole country. Like there are some countries around the world that um save seeds because that's their kite. Without the seeds, they don't have kite. Um and that was really interesting because here in Aotearoa, We've got lots of different seed banks for a tiny little country like us. And especially in the Crown Research Institutes where I work, um, in ag research, we have the Margaret Ford Germplasm Centre, which is for arable crops and uh, pastures. And within the Margaret Ford, there is also the Indigenous Floral Seed Bank, Um it is uh, managed by Massey University and uh, the Plant Conservation Group. Um, it's quite an elite group. So, um, yeah, we're still working with them to, um, you know, sort of uh, support, I suppose, support us as Māori in the seed collecting. I have aspirations that one day that Indigenous Seed Bank will be run by Indigenous people. And... Um, 
So the next slide, please. So this brings up to our current mahi I'm involved in at the moment. It's uh, B3. B3 is better border biosecurity. And it's dealing with plant pests like diseases, like insects that are not actually in the country at the moment. They're still on the border. So um, assessing the risk of ROD, rapid or hair death to Aotearoa and the Pacific is a project um, that I was involved in. There's um, Virginia Moroni from Plant Food Research is the project leader. And we had uh, Teresa Waiariki from Plant Food Food Research and Tefano Akanui and myself and a colleague of mine from Ag Research, Mark McNeil, that um, working on that project that we went to Hawaii to look at uh, the rapid or hair death. Other kaupapa I work on in this space is enabling mana whenua responses to B3 threats of our Taonga species because where I come from in my little hapu in Ngāti Paro, our whānau don't know about this stuff. So it's about, you know, making sure that they do. And all whānau around the mutu, actually. So we're trying to put some sort of plan together where we can share this knowledge around the mutu under this B3 banner. He waka haurua is a, I've thrown that in because that's another B3 kaupapa that um, I work on. And it's around the EPA Mataranga framework and biocontrol. Uh, for me, the, all these kaupapa are linked. I see them linked. Although B3 don't, but I do. So that's why I've mentioned them all because it's all about building the capability and the knowledge of our whānau to know about these things. Like the EPA Mātauranga Māori framework was formed, um, you know, to deal with all the EPA applications that come into the country. I'm specifically just looking at biocontrol, but it's about uh, it, it, it. It's about all the applications. I mean. And it's about uh, some of our whānau are a little bit, well, quite a lot of our whānau are a little bit, um, you know, hesitant about the biocontrol because biocontrol is bringing in pests to get rid of other pests. Uh, and some of our whānau are hesitant about this EPA Mātauranga framework. So, you know, there's a few stories in there, but for me, these all these three kaupapa, for me, are connected. Could we have the next slide, please? <laughs> Sorry, I don't think I said that last time. So Aloha Big Island, um, we were welcomed by a kind of pōhiri uh, where our uh, kanaka maoli um, welcomed us and we um, went up to their maunga, uh, Kia Leo, and um, paid our respects to the goddess of fire, um, Pele. And... Uh, to do that, we had to walk through a steam and then uh, we did a mele oli, we did a waiata. Um, it was like a, it was a pōhiri of sorts for us, but it was, yeah, it was a really uh, special thing. Now, Ohia Lehua is closely related to our pohutukawa, our rata, and its uh, Latin name is Metrosideris polymorpha, which polymorpha is different. It has different structures that can come in a tree, a prostrate plant, a shrub. But, and Ohia grows all over the country. It's not like our Puhutukawa, which just hangs around the coast. Um, it's It covers the whole country. It's one of the major plants on Big Island, Hawaii, because I'm only going to talk about Big Island because that's where we were. Um, next slide, please. Um, here is so, uh, a lehua is a keystone species in Hawaii and closely related to our puhutukawa. Um, it's the first plant that comes up on the lava flow. It's it's the first plant that pops out, and they had a lava flow back there in 2018. Uh, we were there in 2000 and last year actually. This time last year, um, and there's. You can see that in the middle picture, there's all the lava and the little bush in the middle. Well, that's all, all here. Um, and, you know, the Komato will tell you the story of why that bush is still there and the lava went around it. 
And then there's a couple of pictures of the ohia coming up in the lava. It's just amazing. It's such a resilient plant, you know, that there's nothing there but the lava and these plants just coming up out of it, surviving. Um, the big picture under the heading, uh, those are diseased plants. You can see the colour of them. You see the green and the and the grey. They're the diseased plants that are in their forest. And then the picture where the sky, you can see the blue sky, that's a, that's the landscape covered in all here. So that's how, you know, widespread and how important this plant is to not just the ecology of Bee Island, but culturally as well, because it, it forms part of the culture around the hula in the way it sways and in the flowers that make up the beautiful lay that they make. So it's a very important um, plant to our Hawaiian ohana. Next slide, please. So while we were there, we were taken into diseased or here forests to look at um to look at what was happening. And when they say rapid or here death, it means that these trees can be healthy and then weeks later they're dead, they're gone. So that's why it's a rapid um, thing. It's spread mainly. They have this ambrosia beetle frass. Frash is like um the outputs that the beetles make this, you know, the, the frass from oh, here is like sawdust. You can see it. So that's covered with disease too. We have our um, our phanocosin here um, showing us cutting open a diseased tree to show us what it looked like inside. And, um, and that top picture above him is where... They're saying that hoofed animals, they call ungulates. It took me a while to get what an ungulate was. I had to look it up on Google, but it's a hoofed mammal. Like here, we would call them our deer and our pigs, and they have the same thing. They have different mammals running around the ngahere there. So they found that if they fenced in these, um, these places, that the disease was pretty much contained. And um, this is a, okay, next slide, please. So while we were there, we went around with our kanaka maoli, which are our native Hawaiians, around Big Island in Hawaii. And uh, we spent a bit of time with them because they're, you know, doing things like um, like uh, growing, um, you know, bringing back the vegetation of all here. I mean, some of the places we saw, they still had the disease there. Uh, we went on the other side of the island over to Waimea where they had old cattle stations. Now, Hawaii, that part of Hawaii was big on cattle. So there's a lot of cleared ground there. We were at an old cattle station re helping them revegetate um, and, um, you know, reclaiming the land the land back. That have already had revegetated half their Mona um, 20 years previously, and they were just looking at the at the other half and before we do anything over there it was always a melioli which is like a karakia for everything to go in the bush to do everything a bit like what we do here too um the little picture down there in the corner is the um maramataka that they follow and they had little booklets and you know just some amazing little resources around that um and so the whole trip was about whanaungatanga and ohana. Ohana is the Hawaiian term that's like like fano, but you know even more. Um, it's you know strong sense of community. So we went to have a you know we had having a look at their nursery because what our main co papa was about is when we come back to Aotearoa uh, and even before we went there, it was collecting seeds off our uh, Pohutukawa and Rata uh, to send over to Hilo, um, Hawaii, um, to be tested for resistance to a rapid or here death. Um, and we went into the nurseries where they do this, you know, and said, you know, what what's going to happen to the seeds when they come here? Because our mana whenua, where we're collecting from, want to know this too. 
So what they do is they do a little mele, which is, you know, mele oli, which is like a, a karakia over our seeds. And, you know, they're looked after so well, like, you know, just like little babies and they propagate them. And, um, and yeah, so they, and they hosted us so well there. They pulled out all the stops, you know, even got a helicopter ride, you know, uh, Teresa and Virginia and um, all of this. They just, we just opened up their hearts and their, the, even the, the government agencies. And what was so cool about it was like, we all work in Crown Institutes here, but so do our Kanaka Mo'oli over there. And it was, you know, doing the same sort of work. They just took us out in the field, showed us, you know, what they did and uh, and where they went. And it was just, yeah, we were just very well hosted. And thankfully, we've been able to repay that when they came over earlier this year for the ICBI, the International Biological Invasions Conference in May. Um, next slide, please. <laughs> So a um, couple of days before we left, we had our own little lava flow, which was one of the most exciting things I'd seen in my life. And um, so, yeah, this is our uh, ROD, is the rapid or here death. Um, this is our ROD, Ohana, that uh, looked after us there. So um, we had got to say kia ora to Pele and mahalo to our Ohana that helped us there. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say, but anyway, next slide, please. So back to Aotearoa and back to my B3 kopapa is uh, working with our mana whenua around collecting seeds. Now, it's a bit different when you're not the mana whenua and you have to go into another hapu iwi. So we had these uh, seed collecting protocols that we took into the um, the hapu to, you know, get them to have a look at them and see how they want to put their tikanga and what happens in their hapu into those protocols. And, and you know, that's how we collected seed. This uh, this first photo with the beach in, that's from Waipiro Bay in Ngāti um, We're collecting there. And the rest of these pictures are from my colleague, Teresa Waiariki, collecting in um, Northland and, you know, going through with the Fano how to collect the seeds. And these are the seeds that are going over to uh, to our Ohana Fano in Hawaii to be tested for resistance. So far, they have tested uh, Metrosideris excelsa, which is the, the um, popular um, puhutukawa from seeds they had from the botanical gardens in Auckland and they're saying that 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 uh, species has shown some resistance to Ohia rapid death but we're still um, testing Darata and actually when you look at the Ohia it is more closely it looks more like our Rata than our uh, Puhutukawa they look exactly the same those you know they do so the journey still continues. Uh, we're still sending seeds over. We send them down to um, to Christchurch or Taupahi to plant food research there where they process them and they send them to the USDA in Hilo um, to test for resistance. These are some of our, um, the bottom plants are some of our, pl our um, seeds that have been propagated there. They look like the the uh, vines, the the, the metrosideris vines. And when we're collecting the seeds to send over there, we're making sure the capsules are still closed um, because the, the seed inside is still viable. There's like a very small space to collect them. Um, so these seeds are propagated and infected with the disease of rapid or here death. And, you know, that's a bit much when you tell our mana whenua that, they get a bit of a shock because that's what's happening, you know. And But um, it's, it's also helping the Hawaiians to look at our species and their species, and it definitely is helping us and preparing us because this is a disease that's probably going to be the next myrtle rust. And we kind of want to be prepared for it. And, and 
that's the co-papa that I say that all these B3 co-papa that I'm connected to are all related because that's what it's all about. It's about preparing our whanau for these threats that are on their way um, and making sure we're ready for them. Uh, next slide, please. I hope I've said it. Oops. Oh, sorry. I'm just having a bit of a mouse problem here. Okay. So we're still requiring some seed, so I'm going to use this platform to throw it out there if you have some Metrosideris robusta and Metrosideris umbellata, um, uh, please, um, you know, be, be well appreciated. Um, and these are the two, Southern Northern Rata and the uh, Southern Rata. Um, ngamihi nui. I mean, I'd like to acknowledge, I didn't write my acknowledgements down, I'd like to acknowledge my Ngāti Pāro who and um, our mana whenua from all around the mutu involved here. I'd like to acknowledge TTW for the mahi they have done for our whānau, our mana whenua and our communities, for the Millennium Seed Bank staff, uh, for our whānau in London who welcomed us and our colleagues all around the world that share the seed conservation journey with us, especially our kanaka maoli and our ROD ohana, you know, ngā mihi nui. Kia ora. Kā pai, nē, nō te mihi atu kia koe wai paina, uh, humai te, te pakepake te whānau. We've had a few questions come in during your presentation, so we'll step through those. Uh, by the way, uh, and you would have seen those of you that have looked at the chat or the questions, Michael has been assiduous in reminding us of the seed map. Please follow the link if you haven't. Uh, he's probably so dedicated that you'll get an email if you don't click on it, but who knows? I don't know how the technology works. Here I know. Uh, could you please, first question, Waipaina, could you please elaborate on the EPA Mātauranga Māori framework and why some of our whānau have concerns? Ooh. That's one of the kaupapa I'm working on. The EPA have developed a Mātauranga Māori framework for assessing their applications because when an application comes through now, uh, there has to be some sort of Māori consultation. If we're bringing in an insect to get rid of another pest, um, it, there has to be Māori consultation. And um, and they use this Mātauranga framework they've developed to uh, assess the Mātauranga of the applicant. Um, and the, and some, you know, and some whānau uh, say, well, our hapu has its own mātauranga. Well, you know, what are we doing following this government mātauranga? But it's it's an, it's a process that I'm still working on. So, yeah. Um, I don't say too much about that. That co is still going. But, yeah, we're coming up against these different uh, views from different whānau around them or two. Yeah, kia ora. Uh, that's a good question, Fano. And the as been around the EPA when that was developed, it was uh, to ensure that mātauranga could be queried from a mātauranga basis. Mm. And uh, of course, the EPA is a national regulator. It's not up to the EPA to determine what mātauranga is, but the, to have an avenue to send a clear signal to those that are looking at. Uh, getting decisions that the EPA regulates to ensure that they put some rigour around the mātauranga conversation. And it, it, it's, it is developing, and you're right, it's currently going through a review at the moment. I'm not sure what stage that's at. But I, I uh, like what you said earlier, Waipaina, about how the mātauranga from Hapu and Iwi is developed at, you know, by Hapu and Iwi, from Hapu and Iwi, it already exists within those Hapu and Iwi. On to another question. How do we manage Māori Tawake when their seeds are only viable when they are germinated and don't seem to survive well in storage? Yeah, that's another problem with seed storage. To have um, cryopreservation is another way of storing seeds where they get frozen down to you know really cold temperatures. 
I haven't had much mahi in that space. I just know about it. And there's a lot of our seeds that can't be dried out and stored out of conventionally or, or whatever the word is, how we do them now, because, um, yeah. And so I know there's some stuff happening in Aotearoa around cryopreservation, um, but I don't know much about it. Kapai. Kia ora. Uh, another question. How did it feel seeing our taonga in a British herbarium? Well, there's a few feelings there. It was seeing the statue of Joseph Banks that was really, <laughs> and yeah, it was, yeah, it was quite, um, yeah, it was quite profound actually seeing, seeing our stuff there, but you know, there's, it, yeah. It, um, you just sort of, sort of go back to the time that um, that they came here and, and took our stuff over there. But I'll tell you what stood out for me was looking at that database. They had dots all over it from all over the world except Aotearoa. And that sort of balanced it for me. Mm, kia ora. So what similarities did you notice between those in Australia, Aotearoa and Hawaii around seed collection protocols and tikanga? There are no uh, protocols in Australia around uh, working with Indigenous people. There might be now, but they weren't then. And in Hawaii, they're very similar to us. They work very closely, you know, they all kind of work together. And I don't know if it's because, you know, there's, I mean, yeah, they seem to be we're you know trying to come to some sort of agreement like we are still uh with the systems they have there um and you know inserting our own uh te ao maori into those systems and they're doing the same thing in hawaii from what i saw and and the kanaka maoli i worked with 